spring is in the air and spring cleaning, 18th century style, is on my mind. We're just wrapping up with supper here, which means it's time to do the dishes. But in the days before dishwashers and Dawn detergent, how did people keep their kitchens clean? My friend Sydney has told you all about 18th century soap. So I want to tell you about two of my other favorite historical cleaning products, wood ash and sand. The best part, they're all natural, eco-friendly, versatile, cheap, and they work so well that you might even want to introduce them into your own kitchen, or at least keep them in mind for your next camping trip. As we learned from Sydney, lye soap is an effective cleaning product, but it takes some time to cure. It's best produced by a professional. It was in the 18th century, relatively expensive. And sometimes you just might not have any soap on hand when you need it most. Sydney told us that wood ash is one of the key ingredients in lye soap, along with animal fat. So I wonder, what do you think would happen if we just threw some of this raw wood ash that I've pulled right out of the fire pit into this dirty, greasy bowl? It turns out our 18th century dishwashers, people, not machines, often did just that as housekeeping books like this one show. So let's see, at first, it looks like you've made an even bigger mess. You've just added a bunch of gritty, dusty powder to an already slimy, dirty bowl. But some exciting chemistry is about to take place. The wood ashes mixed with hot water essentially become lye soap and they cut through whatever slime you're trying so you can get a clean dish. And you have an even a more exciting reaction when you add vinegar. Let's see what happens when we add vinegar. I don't know if you can hear the sizzle action, but I sure can, and it sounds pretty exciting. So we're gonna let that sit a minute to work its magic before we scrub and rinse and get it all clean. While we're waiting, speaking of scrubbing, sand is another extremely versatile cleaning product in the 18th century. You see it being used to scour pots and pans, scrub kitchen floors and fireplace hearthstones, clean plates and dishes, even wash hands. Some people would put a thin, down, a thin layer down on their floors to catch the drippings in the kitchen. They'd sweep it away at the end of the week and replace it each week. In fact, sand was so widely used that there were special salesmen or peddlers who went door to door selling sand and other mineral products for household cleaning. And they were known as sand men. By the early 19th century, parents trying to get their kids to go to bed started saying, the sand man is coming a phrase still used today, rooted in those sandy, crusty bits you find in the corners of your eyes. After waking up from a nice long sleep, supposedly sprinkled there by the Sandman himself. As far as cleaning products go, sand is dirt cheap, if you get my pun, especially compared with soap, which was one of many common household essentials taxed by the British Parliament in the 18th century. Records show that in the 1770s, an average middling sort of family would spend about three times as much on soap as they'd spend on ale for the entire family and their friends, and roughly the same amount they'd spend for a week's worth of bread, butter, and cheese. By comparison, even though they were using a lot of it, they were spending only a tiny fraction of that on sand. When you add the facts that you need hot water to properly clean with soap, that water takes a lot of time and energy to in the days before modern plumbing, and a lot of time and fuel to heat up over a fire, soap becomes even more expensive. My favorite 18th century sand trick is taking a handful of damp sand and sprinkling it when it's time to sweep. The dampness of the sand clumps and traps the debris so you don't sweep up a giant dust cloud and the grit of the sand again helps to scrub the floors clean as it is being swept away. It works like a charm. And that is all I think we've got time for today, but I encourage you to check out these other resources if you'd like to learn more about cleaning in the 18th century.